everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Today we're going to talk about something I know a whole lot about. Distilled. Well, I know nothing about it. I know nothing about... About the process of distilling, you mean. You know yes. plenty about distilled, the board game. A spirited strategy game. But you don't know anything about spirits. Did you know that was a pun? That's it's, not a pun. Yeah, spirits. Yes, it's definitely a pun. I don't think he realized that a spirited strategy... Oh, no, I know that's a pun. No, you didn't know I thought you meant that. the word distilled was a pun. No, <laughs> forget it. You, you don't know what you're talking about. No, Tom's the expert here. I'm not the expert. Chris is. Chris will teach us how to play the game, not Z. Here's the stilled setup on the table. This is your own personal player board area, and so there's only one out here, but there are more players that can play, obviously, so it would take up more table space. There's going to be your victory point tracker and then the round tracker over here. The game is played over seven rounds. Players are able to distill one drink every round for various amounts of victory points. The more difficult they are, the more points they'll be worth. So they're trying to make these drinks to be worth points, collect some of these cards over here which are intrinsically worth points, and then complete goals and immediate objectives, and whoever has the most points at the end of the seven rounds wins. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the round structure now. The game starts each round with any start of round abilities, shown by this green symbol on certain cards. So in this case, I'd be able to get a water for free from the market. Now the market phase itself begins. Once uh, one purchase at a time, players in clockwise order will be purchasing one card from either the general market over here or the basic market shown on this board. You are limited to one purchase at a time, so I would purchase one, then the next player clockwise, the next player clockwise, then I could continue purchasing or passing. You're only allowed to purchase two items from this basic market, so if you purchase one of these things, say this plant sugar over here, the game recommends that you set it to the side so that you remember you've already purchased once from the basic market this round. The next player goes, and when it comes back to me, I can continue purchasing. I could only make two purchases from the basic market, so if it comes back to me again, if I want to continue purchasing, I have to either purchase from this market here, or I could purchase new recipes that I would like to make by spending money and then putting these cues into this area here. Now, uh, there are other things you can purchase. You, to make drinks, need bottles to sell them in and barrels to, to distill them in. You can get equipment upgrades, which go up here. Uh, and then you can also purchase specialized ingredients that have more victory points and more abilities. Once everybody is finished purchasing, then you're going to go to the distilling phase. If you have water and yeast and any sugars, those are the basic recipes, ingredients that you'll need to complete recipes. You place them into your wash back here. For every sugar, whether it be grain, plant, or fruit sugar that you have, you'll also take alcohol cards representing the distilling process. These cards will get formed into one little deck and then shuffled. After you shuffle all of your ingredients and your newly acquired alcohol, you're going to remove what's called the angel share and the devil's take, the top card and the bottom card from each deck in a little bit of a push your luck format. You reveal the two cards. The two cards revealed will go back to your pantry so you have access for them in the future. Alcohol is even a useful card for you. When you reveal your combination here, what you're looking for is to see if you complete any of your recipes. If you have a, any form of sugar, you can make vodka. If all of your sugar got removed during that process, you can still make moonshine, which is worth the fewest points but the most money, to help you in future rounds. In this case, because I have a plant alcohol, I, uh, plant sugar still remaining in my drink, I could either brew vodka if I would like, or because I unlocked this cachaça recipe, I could make that because I meet the requirements for it, which will give me more points, but less money. Players will then go to the selling phase. You include a barrel and you include a bottle in every uh, drink that you distill. These are just basic ones that you'll always have. If you had purchased specialty bottles or specialty barrels, they're going to be possibly worth extra benefits, more money, more points. Let's say that this was exactly what I did here. I would then go to the selling phase. I look at how much money my drink is worth, and I gain that much money, plus anything shown here. I look at the number of victory points that these cards show, plus any victory points for the recipe that I made. I would sell all of that, and I could also grab one of these spirit labels. 
Spirit labels go on the top of your player board, giving you a one-time special effect and or, or, or two victory points. And that is now the selling phase. Used items will go over here if you use specialty uh, sugars. They'll go to this discard pile. This truck is just a discard pile. Regular sugars go back here, but bottles, if you use specialty bottles, you'll collect them because at the end of the game you'll also have a, a bit of victory points for having a, a different bottle display. Other cards just go back to where they came from. And now you've done the distilling and the selling phase, then you'll get ready for the next round of the game. Now there are different things that you can do as well. Instead of using a recipe that calls for a metal barrel that does not age, you can instead use wooden barrels on recipes that do require aging, or you can even have clay barrels depending on the recipe that you're trying to do. If you had those, you would take all the ingredients for that drink, and you would age them in your barrel in one of your two warehouses. At the end of every round that something is aging, you get to add a flavor card to it. So you could hold off longer and longer to get more flavor cards onto your drinks as the rounds pass by. And when you do finally sell it, you get a bonus for having more flavors. You also get to reveal the flavors. Fishy, berries, floral, and these can be worth extra money for you. So at the end of seven rounds after you've done all of this, you will be earning points from your remaining objectives, from any spirits that you still have aging in your warehouse, from your bottle collection, according to this chart over here, any upgrades if they offer victory points, and then your goals. Throughout the game, you'll also be earning points if you complete these objectives, these spirit awards on the side. At the end of a round, you'll check, did anybody complete this? If so, all the players who completed it get those points and then that award is done and players can work towards the other ones. Whoever has the most points at the end of seven rounds is the winner of the game. The first thing I have to say is I would not have thought this was Paverson. Is it Paverson? Paverson Games, Paverson yeah. Games first game. I agree, yeah. This oh is gosh. This is a deluxe game that doesn't feel ridiculous. This is my type of a production that I really love. I'm not I don't usually get floored with like, you know, big minis and everything like that, but just really good artwork. Everything's pretty readable. Uh, the the insert works for setting up the game quickly and then tearing it down pretty mm -hmm. quickly. It's like it's deluxe feeling but functional. I really like that. And everything is quality. Again, it's that feeling of yes, this is a Kickstarter. But it seems to come from someone who knows how to avoid pitfalls. And I don't know if, again, this person or, or people involved in the game have done this kind of thing before. Whether they have or not, kudos for avoiding a lot of possible pitfalls and putting out a product that manages, like you said, to feel both deluxe and easy to play and streamlined. Yeah. And table ready, you know? Yeah. I. It comes with, for example, a sheet inside of it that says, this is how you punch things and put them away in the box. Like, little things like that. Back of the rule book, really good round structure aid, good end of game scoring aid. Yeah. Like, all that type of stuff is in there. It avoided pretty much all of the pitfalls that I typically see from, like, first time, you know, publishing, first time designing, all that stuff. It, it, it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. And speaking of someone who knows nothing about the theme, I thought the theme was pretty strong, though. Yeah, I thought They're so. They're talking about this. I learned factoids I did not know before about mm -hmm. the angel share and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, learned not to say the word beer at all. I got <laughs> yelled at every time. Well, everything you made was beer. Tom was like, okay, I'm going to make this beer. I'm like, none of this is beer. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, what beer did you make? There's no beer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is not my forte, but I like the game. So looking at it from a game perspective, and I mean, I thought the art was great, and it made sense. You're like, hey, you need water because you need water. You're not going to have a drink. Yeah. Okay, I, I can grasp that. Yeah, mechanically, it's an interesting mix of stuff. There's this sort of buying, drafting part. Then you 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 build what you're attempting to make, shuffle that up, lose a couple cards, and then. See how you made out. See how your concoction turned out. Get money, get victory, you know, glory. I don't know what they call it here, but whatever. Get those points. 
keep some of that stuff, try to build up. You can, you know, do the, the unlocking the different kinds of drinks you can make. Oh, yeah. There's plenty going on in it. Uh, I, my one concern, actually, or not my one concern, but one of the things that holds <coughs> back for me a little bit is there's too much going on, I thought, for seven rounds. And I don't want the game to be longer, necessarily. I just thought there's so much to unlock, possibly, so much to do, that I I was kind of like scrambling the whole time. At no point was there that, that moment that comes and you go, and now I get to coast and reap. Mm, okay. I think that's interesting because, yeah, I would agree, right? Seven rounds to the game, you're making one drink every round. There's never a round where you're like, I'll make three because I have so much stuff. Yeah. And the next round I can kind of ease back. Like, there isn't that. But what I think gives a little bit of that feel is when you make, when you finally uh, make an aged drink mm -hmm. and you're sitting there, uh, and, and the next round you still can make another new, you know, distilled concoction. Um, but you have this really nice thing just sitting there, accruing those flavor cards. Yeah. And you're like, oh, ho, 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 ho. just you wait until I, oh, I'm going to add another one at the end of this round. Right. That feels great. That's one of the, uh, there, there are many alcohol, you know, brewing and making games and stuff out there. I think this has a really satisfying way of aging things, where it's just one card. It's very simple to do the aging part. Right. But you know it's just kind of stacking up money and points. So I think that's where I get a little bit of that satisfaction that you feel like you're not seeing. Yeah, interesting. Okay. I also really like that I can come out the gate and make something. You know, there's a lot of games where you're like, you're eventually going to get to do something cool halfway through. Here, turn one, I'm making a drink. And you know what? If it's moonshine, which it probably is, <laughs> who cares? I'm still getting money and I still have the satisfaction right. of doing something. And the game is really clever. And the two rules that I think save the game in many ways is that push your luck, which I like a lot, the two cards remove. You get to keep them. Oh, heavens, yes. yes. You don't lose them, and your special ingredient, you cannot lose that way. Those two things keep the game from saying, well, that was terrible luck, I just lost the game, out of sheer luck. No. Right. Yeah, you might not be able to make a great drink that you want it to make, but also you set yourself up. If you need two of an ingredient, put three in, if you really want to be sure. Well, and there's so, there's, uh, the, the equipment cards are so cool. Right. That, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, this game, I only remove one card from mm -hmm. every time that I do it. Whew! You know, there's variable player power, so you can have you know cheaper goes at the market phase, or you know you have a, a, a special concoction, your own special drink does something you know fairly different from other people's. There's some really cool stuff. One of my favorite parts is the uh, <laughs> when I first taught it to you, the thing I forgot halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. uh, are those spirit awards. Oh, yes. Because, my mistake. <laughs> That's like my third time playing it, too. I was like, whoops, hey, these things. I think that kind of goes to your point that there is kind of a lot going on. There is, yeah. Yeah, but those immediate awards, if you complete at the end of a round, you know, that gives you some really cool direction to kind of focus on. Yeah. Because you might say, well, it's most efficient if I just do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But... I want to get those seven points before someone else does. Maybe I'll kind of you know race for that, and so that mixed with what you're talking about, you know, these really good clean mechanisms, that makes the game both thoughtful but also very exciting. That moment of yes, I get to claim this award before either of you two schmoozes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but this is a game that manages to. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. It's robust mechanically. It's not by the numbers. It's a game that does feel like it, they a lot of thought and meaningful decisions went into the design. And you can tell that that theme has been there. It's lived in. They made choices f with that theme in mind. It's, it, those two things really are well put together. So again, I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. And it, you don't even have to be a drinker, right? I think for that theme to appeal to you, it's just a, it's an interesting setting. They're going for that zoomed in, you know, microcosm and, and utilizing it well. One of my favorite dumb mini games in Breath of the Wild is cooking food. Uh, if you ever played that this game, you go around that. and you collect resources and you put them in and then Link rattles the pan and something comes out. Sometimes yes. it's trash, but it's, 
you get these good foods, and after a while, you're like, if I put more of these ingredients in, the food gets better. Mm -hmm. I can make these amazing foods. I don't know why I like that. And that's how I felt with this game. I'm putting stuff together, and yeah, sometimes you might get moonshine, but you get to pick. You, I'd be like, I'm going to put in a whole bunch of this to get more money. But I also, you can't just willy-nilly, more isn't better. More can sometimes ruin it and turn it into moonshine or whatever. Right. And I find that to be a good combo. Like if I if I'm clever in how I build my drink and buy the stuff, then I'll I'll do well. I'll get a lot of points. But also, worse comes worse, I'm getting something. You are. Yeah. And that absolutely. makes me happy. I don't like games where you go. I like pushing your luck, but pushing your luck and at being empty-handed isn't as fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And, and losing things after a lot of planning, that's not fun. Yeah, if this game actually forced you to not be able to make any drink on a round or, or lose the cards that you took off the top and bottom, that'd be a serious problem. Absolutely. Well, and then after, you could distill basic moonshine vodka, the stuff you start with, right? And you still get one of those labels, too. And you get to cover up one of those things at the top of your player board. Yeah, like, I like that You're going to get a free... Upgrade that upgrade in the market costs six bucks. I'm getting that now because I made moonshine because yeah. the rest of my recipe went awry. That's huge. Yeah. And I love that. Everything about this game feels like it's giving you. It's giving you opportunities to have fun. It's giving you opportunities to get that really expensive thing early. If you want to, I could aim for that my first round. I have that great piece of machinery for the next six rounds. Absolutely, I love that. Yeah, I agree with that. So, what would you give it? Um. There's a lot of things I, I thought the game was <coughs> putting in there that could have been expansions, could have been modules, like extra scoring, you know, the scoring in-game uh, awards, the players having their own ingredients and their own recipe. And again, you're doing that whole clawing the whole game to be able to like, I brewed it. Oh, oh my goodness. There's, there's a few things I felt that way about, um, but generally I do like it. I'm hovering between an 8 and a 7.5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in at a 7.5 on this one. I Again, if I could remove those things willingly, this would scoot up for me. Even if I then very quickly after playing it, you know, with the same people multiple times, put that back in, hmm. I just find it... There's maybe like too too many things, too little you know things that are just a little too much for me, that I think would make the game more accessible if they were not there and they feel like they don't need to be. So seven point five from me. I actually understand that, um, but I'm going to come in at eight point five. This is just this is my jam. I yeah. like making something every turn. I mentioned Auto Mania. Is it? Auto Mania. Auto Mania. Yeah. I get to yeah. make a car every turn in that game. This game, I get to make a drink every turn. And in this one, I'm making a in a fun bottle. In this one, yeah, I got push. I'm pushing this drink and making it last for multiple turns. I like that. And sure. the dumb flavor cards that has some really gross flavors in there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just uh, there, there's a sense of accomplishment and getting the little ban the label, which I mean. You might not get some near the end of the game because the drinks went out, but you're going to get some. Yeah. And that sense of accomplishment of, like, not only did I get money and points, but also I get one of these upgrades, and all the upgrades are good. Um, and it just feels like there's a wide open, wide open, every game, your special ability, and the first upgrade or two that you buy are going to determine kind of your course for the game. Yes, yes. I just have so much fun with that. And then the, the amazing production, mm, so good. This is a 9.5 for me. Wow. I really like this. I think that one of the things that you said, Z, is that this was always this theme. Yeah, yeah. This was never, uh, uh, you know, trading in the Mediterranean and, the, oh, actually, you know what? You know what might work better? Yeah. It always was this theme. And every mechanical decision that went into it has a great thematic analog and a tie in. You learn stuff about it. They put so much attention to detail that the, the, the whiskey tiles, are spelled the two different ways on the different sides. Because in the US and Northern Ireland it's spelled with an E, and in every other country it's not. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much care that went into the production of this, and I feel like there was equal care that went into the game design. I really like this, it's so thematic, it's so fun to just make things, and sometimes you, sometimes you just make a drink that you look at, you just kind of stare at it for a second and go, I have so much money. 
and I paired it with a bottle that's going to give me these bonus points, and it's, you just feel like this is so fun, and I get to do that again next round. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that yeah, my, our tastes are you know, I, I get why you feel the way that you yeah. think about it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed all those things. I just again, it's the it's the stuff around that stuff like. Mm. Score flags from different content, like that stuff. Okay, it's yeah. that stuff that pulls it down for me. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want to do all this junk. I don't want to score all this junk. Actually, I think they could have dropped the flags. From yeah, the, the flags, the this, the that. Like, there's a lot of little things, but I agree with you. The the the, the turn to turn, moment to moment, mm -hmm. very thematic, very fun. Yeah, so much fun. I I love this one. Well, there you go, folks. That is distilled. With pun subtitle. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. Uh, cheers. Drink some beer. No, it's not beer, Tom. I didn't say beer. Stop saying beer, Tom. Wine?